Elon Musk has co-founded many companies worth bragging about for their achievements, and his Starlink may soon become one of the biggest internet service companies in the world, as well as achieve global outreach in the shortest period of time. Starlink stepped up to the pace in 2021 after years of research inside SpaceX. After three years of successful launches, the project topped 1,000 satellites deployed into orbit this year. After one year and dozens of successful launches, Starlink currently has well over 2,000 operational satellites in space. Starlink claims to provide service in well over 40 countries across the globe and more to come. We can say Elon Musk is doing a great job as the long-term ambition of the company is being achieved, and Starlink may soon become the biggest internet company in the world. And before we start the video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all Tesla news. Recently, Elon Musk showcased the capabilities of Starlink on a one-hour journey from Burbank to San Jose, California, providing Wi-Fi for Netflix, YouTube, and video chats at an incredible altitude of 30,000 feet. The in-flight Wi-Fi reaches rates of over 100 megabytes per second, providing more than adequate bandwidth for online activities, such as streaming movies, live video conversations, and web browsing. The internet bandwidth wasn't monitored, so no one knows if it slowed down during the flight. That still remains questionable. Regional airline JSX, which calls itself a hop-on jet service, provided the plane for the occasion. As the first airline to sign up for SpaceX's Starlink internet service, JSX currently has a lot of bragging rights. Amazingly, Hawaiian Airlines is another airline to sign up with Elon Musk's firm for satellite service. Previously, JSX CEO Alex Wilcox confirmed that they chose Starlink because of its compact antennas and kissed a lot of frogs before deciding on them. Since Starlink first began competing in the satellite internet industry, it has faced off against longer-standing competitors like Biosat and Intelsat. Before this, Starlink had unsuccessfully marketed its internet service to four of the five leading US airlines, including Delta. From their experiences, Musk's invention achieves quicker Wi-Fi signal delivery by using smaller and lower-flying satellites than its rivals. A bigger aircraft with increased customer demand may soon be too much for the smaller satellites to handle. However, SpaceX has confirmed that all sizes of aircraft can use its Starlink system without facing challenges. What's more, Elon claims Starlink satellites are already connecting schools in the world's largest rainforest. Musk met with Brazil's President Jair Bolsonaro and Communications Minister Fabio Faria sometime in May to explore plans to introduce Starlink service to the nation. Starlink will aid rural people while also assisting in preserving the Amazon rainforest. At the time, Musk tweeted, Super happy for the launch of Starlink for 19,000 disconnected schools in rural regions and Amazon environmental monitoring. We are pleased to inform you that these plans are already taking shape. Gwyn Shotwell, President and Chief Operating Officer of SpaceX, flew out to Brazil to see a Starlink-connected school in the Amazon area. Because the school is located in a secluded neighborhood, it did not have consistent internet connectivity. The school is linked to Starlink in the Amazon region. I'm going to the Carraro de Varzia area with the company's Gwyn Shotwell to see a school linked to the company's internet. They also exchanged photos of Ms. Shotwell with school children who were viewing a live video of Mr. Musk on a screen powered by the freshly built Starlink network as seen below. Musk shared this picture on Twitter with the caption, Starlink connecting schools in the Amazon. Many fans responded to Musk's Twitter account saying, people who weren't able to get access to education will now have it. This is huge. Again, Musk makes a valid point by posting, education is the path out of poverty and internet access enables education. In reality, around 40 million Brazilians, or roughly 19% of the population, do not have access to the internet. Starlink will provide internet access to remote areas of the nation, allowing people to benefit from new education and career prospects. SpaceX's Starlink satellite constellation can beam internet data everywhere on Earth, and the network is simple to set up. Users just connect the phased array antenna to a power supply and aim it towards a clear sky view to connect to the internet wirelessly over a Wi-Fi network. Currently, SpaceX operates around 3,300 satellites in orbit around the Earth, providing high-speed internet connectivity to over 500,000 users across all seven continents. Interestingly, Starlink services are now available in the vacation cruise market. Royal Caribbean International announced last month that its fleet of ships will be equipped with satellite internet. 
poor Wi-Fi service has long been a problem for travelers in the airline and cruise industries. Seeing that Starlink satellite internet connectivity has already reached boats and RVs, we guess it may soon follow your kid home from school. SpaceX is now working on bringing Starlink to school bus routes that take more than 60 minutes each trip and are mostly unavailable to existing mobile internet providers. Moreover, the vast majority of the participating pupils will not have access to high-speed internet at home, the business notes. Students can maximize their travel time for significant instructional internet usage, time spent with family and friends, or leisure activities if school buses are linked. It will also allow them to finish internet-related assignments on time, even if broadband at home is poor or non-existent. The trial projects came after the FCC granted the business permission in June to deliver Starlink to moving vehicles like automobiles, aircraft, and boats. It now has deployed a high-performance dish capable of providing high-speed internet aboard cruise liners and commercial airplanes. SpaceX submitted the submission to the FCC to request that the commission allow government money to facilitate the installation of Wi-Fi access points in school buses. FCC Chairwoman Jessica Rosenworcel proposed a May proposal to accomplish that precisely, using funds from the Commission's E-Rate program, which is aimed at delivering inexpensive internet to schools and libraries. Over the years, the Commission has received many requests to grant financing to school buses. According to the FCC, E-Rate program funding depends on demand up to an annual Commission established maximum of $4.456 billion. In other news, Musk has also said that the company's satellite internet service, Starlink, will be activated in response to U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken's statement stating the U.S. was taking measures to encourage internet freedom and the free flow of information to Iranians. The U.S. Treasury Department released instructions to extend internet services accessible to Iranians despite U.S. sanctions against the nation amid demonstrations throughout Iran. Our understanding of Starlink is that what they give would be commercial grade, and it would be hardware that is not covered under the general license. So it would be something they would need to put into Treasury, a Treasury official said. A spokeswoman for the United States State Department subsequently noted that the amended license was self-executing and that anyone who fits the conditions described in this general license may continue with their operations without asking further approvals. Musk claims his business wants to give Iranian Starlink satellite internet service, which it had earlier delivered to Ukraine in its struggle against Russia's invasion, and that he would request a sanctions exemption. According to the U.S. State Department spokeswoman, if SpaceX determines that a specific operation intended towards Iranians needed special authorization, OFAC would welcome and prioritize it. By the same token, if SpaceX decides that their operation is already allowed and has any queries, OFAC welcomes that interaction. However, not everything is going perfect for Starlink. Authorities have voiced skepticism against SpaceX's satellite internet service. In August, the FCC decided against giving Starlink an $866 million subsidy because the firm failed to show that the providers could provide the promised service, and because Starlink has still developing technology. SpaceX has said that the FCC's decision is grossly unjust and contrary to the data submitted in the company's application for the subsidy. SpaceX didn't get clearance from the FCC to utilize Starlink in moving spacecraft until June. However, the expansion of the service is ongoing. Musk recently revealed SpaceX is collaborating with T-Mobile to provide access to Starlink satellites for T-Mobile customers. More than 400,000 people throughout the globe are presently subscribed to Starlink. More than 2,500 satellites from the company's network are in low Earth orbit. The service is geared toward providing users in remote places and higher latitudes access to high-speed internet up to 200 megabytes per second. The company's satellites are in low Earth orbit, at the height of around 550 kilometers, equal to about 340 miles. The close proximity allows reduced latency, less delay in data processing, quicker internet, and service in locations where cable internet is unavailable. This is all happening thanks to the innovation and technology of Starlink. While this is all great, don't forget to like this video and subscribe. See you in the next videos.